One Nikon SLR, which is not very well known, is the Nikon F601M. This camera came out in 1990 and it is basically the manual focus version of the Nikon F601. For me, this was the first uh, film SLR which I started using when I got interested in film photography. It was what we had at home, so it was a natural point to start. And already before that I had learned photography on the SLR, so it was an easy transition to this camera because it is very similar to how cameras nowadays operate. The F601M belongs to the same generation as the Nikon F4, which came out in 1988. And on this camera you can find most of the same automated features, like TTL, flash, matrix, metering, uh, DX coding, uh, built-in motor drive. But of course the thing that is missing is the autofocus. Compared to the plain F601, there are also some other features missing, such as the spot metering, and there's also no built-in pop-off flash. Now, I don't know why they have not included these features, probably to make it cheaper, but I guess maybe the spot metering has something to do with the manual focus screen which this camera has. I don't know, just a speculation. Even though this camera is designed as a manual focus camera, you do not get full compatibility with older manual focus Nikon lenses. So, for example, if I want to use this 50mm lens on this camera, I do not get access to the matrix metering, and also I do not get the aperture readout in the viewfinder, and all of the auto exposure modes will not work. And the same goes for the later AFS lenses. With those, you cannot control the aperture, so you are stuck with the most open aperture. You can still use them though, so I mean, <laughs> there is that. But yeah, you would ideally want to use AFD lenses on this camera. This does indeed seem like a very strange uh, design decision. I mean, you make a manual focus camera that is designed to take autofocus lenses, but you cannot use the older lenses in full compatibility, so yeah. This is also something this camera has received a lot of critique for. For example, someone called it just pointless. But then again, you have to remember that at the time autofocus was quite new and some cameras were known for not having very good autofocus. For example, the F801 is known for not having very good autofocus. I don't know for sure about that, I have not used one. But that's what people say. So at the time when this camera was new, there was definitely a lot of skepticism towards autofocus such as it is with all new camera technology. <laughs> when it comes to build quality, on the outside it is very plasticky, but it feels very solid, so it's definitely well built and it has lasted evidentially over 30 years, so yeah, it is okay in that regard. The grip on the camera is quite big and nice, I get quite a good hold on it, but it could be better still. I mean, it's a bit slippery, this finish, if it had some kind of rubber, it would be a bit better, I think. But on the other hand, I have not dropped it, so it's it's fine, I guess. There are many more functions and buttons which disable and enable those functions, but if I went through them all step by step, this would become a very boring video, I think. So I will talk a little bit more about my own experiences using this camera. As I said in the beginning, this was the first film SLR I was using. I think my father got it in like 1991 or something, so it was a camera we had at home, or the most advanced one, so it was a natural point to start. And actually I liked that this camera was manual focus because I was photographing in a lot of dark places, dark abandoned industrial things and so on. So there even the DSLR of the day would not autofocus properly. So it really helped a lot and saved me a lot of frustration. Of course I was also using it for more normal photography and there I didn't really have any problem with it. It worked, it worked very well and it produced nice photos. So even though this camera is equipped with the so-called worst Nikon lens, the 35 to 70 mm AFD. I mean, that even that wasn't really a problem or something that I was thinking about at the time. I mean, of course, it is not a perfect camera. I mean, there are plenty of better cameras from that time, for example, the Nikon F4. But then again, that is a professional model. Of course, it's supposed to be better. <laughs> but as it is with SLRs, uh, the image quality is more dependent on the lenses and the film than the actual body alone. So, I mean, if you use the same lens on a F4 and on this, you will most likely have the same image quality and results. So, yeah. The main drawback of this camera is that you cannot get full compatibility with the older manual focus Nikon lenses, even though it is designed as a manual focus camera. With the manual focus lenses, you can still control all the exposure settings. So, I mean, they are still fine to use. I have used a few of them with this camera and it wasn't such a big deal, actually. From my own experience using this camera, there hasn't really been anything frustrating as such. There are some things I don't like. For example, it makes quite a lot of sound when taking a picture. But then again, it's of course expected. It's a motorized camera after all, and I don't think it's more noisy than other cameras from the same era. So yeah. 
One small annoyance for me about this camera is that you do not have the T function or time function. So if you want to do an exposure longer than 30 seconds, you have to use one of these wire releases and they are not very practical because they sort of like hang off awkwardly <laughs> when you have mounted them and yeah. But it's also again a small thing to complain about. My last small complaint is that when you rewind the film it goes fully into the canister. So if you are developing yourself it adds one extra step to the process. But again it's a very small thing to complain about. I mean the camera is overall quite fine. Just go out and shoot some photos already. <laughs> If you are interested to get into film photography, then these cameras from this generation present a lot of good options. For example, the F401 or F601 or F801 or the F801S, such as in this case, I mean these are quite good options. And the reason for that is because these cameras are usually much cheaper than the cameras from earlier generation or later ones. And also you have a lot of lenses available, there's plenty of AFD Nikon lenses. So yeah, it's a good place to start. But I think that is all I have to say about this camera for now. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And also remember to like the video, it does help out the channel. And if you managed to make it this far, also consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!